Asus ZenBeam Micro Projector. Okay, let's start with the most important stuff. Should you buy this projector? No, you should not. You really shouldn't buy it. But let me get into some of the reasons why. Hi, I'm Benjamin Butcher, he, him. I make videos about tech, and right now I'm making videos like crazy because I'm pushing to hit a thousand subscribers in the next two months. I'm also doing a giveaway. More on that below the like button. Okay, first I'm gonna run through some of the use cases. If you just want the pros and cons list, you can skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen. All right, let's talk use cases. Imagine you're a big executive shaking hands making deals. What's this, however? You need to make an important presentation and the boardroom doesn't have a projector. From your bag, you pull the ultra-portable Asus Zenbeam. You slap that bad boy on the conference table. Well, first you buy a tripod, then you slap it on the conference table, and you're off to the races, and the projector's performance is laughably bad? The pixel density is so low you can barely read your slides? Your colleagues are laughing at you? I tested this projector in a variety of scenarios and I just can't see it as being more than a novelty. A $420 novelty. Nice. But maybe that's not what Asus intended. Maybe it's more for travelers and home use. And by home, I mean a subterranean cave with no interior lighting. Because if you had hoped to use this during the day for any reason, I honestly don't think you'll be able to. The lamp is so weak that any daytime picture is completely washed out. Side note, that my cameras make the picture from this projector look better than it is. I have a hunch this is because our eyes are technically higher resolution cameras than the camera that I'm using, and I think that's why it looks this way. Just imagine the image to be about 15% worse than it looks in the video. The one and only time I actually enjoyed using this was when I projected a TV show onto the ceiling of my bedroom at night obviously. It was nicer than using a laptop, and overall it was a fun experience. So, if you are a teenager with rich parents, and you're looking to throw a really bitchin' sleepover, then this might be for you. Okay, let's do pros and cons. Things we like. I like that it has a built-in lens cap. Very nice. I like that it has a headphone jack and a built-in speaker. Granted, the speaker is basically garbage, but it would be worse without it. I also really like the auto key stoning. That said, there were times when this was really buggy. I'll talk about that more in my dislikes in a second. It's kind of neat that you can use this as a power bank. On the note of the power bank, it comes with a case, and they cut a little hole in the case so that you can use the power bank even more easily. It's funny to me, though, that they had enough foresight to do this, but not enough to punch another hole so that you can charge it. I found the buttons on the back and therefore the interface to be surprisingly well thought out. I will talk about the one thing that I really hated, but other than that, it wasn't so bad. One thing that would have made this a million times better is a connected app. I would love to be able to control this projector with my phone. Side note that given that this is probably made for on-the-go execs, this is shocking that they didn't include this. Okay, things we don't like. There should be some kind of autofocus. If we can figure out how to do it in a camera, then we should be able to do it in a projector. On the note of focus, the dial is imprecise at times. If there were numbers on it and you dialed it to a 6 before, there's no telling if that will work again at the same distance. While I did say that I love the auto keystoning, if you do have to do it manually, it's absolute hell. You can't just hold down the button to speed up the keystoning, so you're essentially left frantically pressing the same button over and over again for it. What feels like ages. I really dislike that they're using a proprietary charger. How? In 2021, are we still doing this? If it was USB-C, I wouldn't have to worry about losing the charger. Frankly, I think that this was another huge mistake. Oh, and as I mentioned, it does not come with a tripod. You'll need to buy one of those. It also doesn't come with an adapter. So if you wanted to use it with literally any MacBook made today and a lot of laptops, then you'll need to buy one of those as well. It does not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. This, I think, is the really big deal surrounding this whole design because the concept of this, the whole point of this projector is portability. And yet, as far as connection goes, you need to have a laptop to make it work. I got a taste of how great this could be when I plugged my Chromecast into it. Honestly, for presentations or any kind of video, this would be a lifesaver. They didn't even provide an adapter for a phone of any kind. Oh, also, it has no internal storage, so you couldn't just load up some movies or a PowerPoint onto it and then throw it into your bag. They did not even include an SD card slot. This, I think, is the biggest offense. They made an okay little projector, but as far as getting content onto it, it's in the Stone Age. Ultimately, I just want to say that as a kid, projectors were magical to me. I wanted this to work so badly. Honestly, though, now that I have one, I have to say that I'm very disappointed. If you've been to a theater, you know how great a large projector can be, and this works in a home theater setting, and I truly believe there will come a day when projectors are smart and portable enough to be portable. The auto keystoning is a glimpse into that world, but right now, the reality is that in addition to being a monument to short-sighted development and a huge lack of future-proofing, the tech just isn't quite there yet. Okay, that's pretty much it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I'm Benjamin Butcher, and as always, I'll be right back.